Amen. Good evening, Facebook family. My name is Sean Henson, and I am the assistant pastor at Covenant Life Church. And me and my wife, who's coming shortly, will be doing service tonight. And as always, before I get started, I'd like to honor our pastors, Apostles Jeff and Apostles Dr. Linda Herbert, for allowing us to fill in and do the broadcast for them. And we just honor and thank them. And so now, without further ado, she will do the announcements. <laughs> Good evening, everyone out on Facebook land, and welcome to our Friday night table talk. So before we begin, I want to just go over some announcements, some events that's coming up in the month of April, um, and even something that's coming up tomorrow. So tomorrow is our women's group, and that starts at 11 a.m. It will be uh, via Zoom. Uh, a reminder email will go out later this evening, so you'll have it first thing um, tomorrow morning so that you can have the Zoom link. The topic is when God uses the hand of a woman, and that will be coming from Judges chapters four and five. So um, please join us. They had a wonderful time last week. We anticipate having a great time this Sunday. It's only about an hour and a half from 11 to 12.30, so you can get your coffee, maybe your brunch, and just join us for a really, really good discussion. The first week of April is coming up, and so we'll be sitting out our spring newsletter. If you have not been getting our newsletters, please, um, you could uh, submit your email via comment and then we'll capture that or Monty will be able to capture that and so we can add you to our email distribution list for our newsletters. Um, also, we have Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday coming up on April the 4th. Um, so be prepared, we will be having communion on that day. So whatever you have in your home, um, if you have juice or water, uh, crackers, bread, just be prepared to take communion with us on that Sunday service on April the 4th. And then the following weekend, which is April the 9th, that Friday night service, and April 11th, that Sunday, we will have our Apostle Leon as our guest minister, Apostle Leon Walters. And so um, please join us. He's an awesome uh, man of God and really gives us a right on word. He's our father apostle. And so we're so excited to have him there. There'll be other events that are coming up in April, so please make sure you check out the newsletter um, so that you can be, uh, you know, apprised of everything that we're doing um, and everything that is um, going on with the church. Amen. Uh, the update with the building is we still have one inspection to go. We're still doing, waiting on the fire inspection, um, and then once that's done, we can start submitting all the paperwork to get the permit. So. Keep praying. We appreciate all that you have done, all that you've sown in. You've sown in prayer. You've sown in money. You've sown in just, you know, patience <laughs> with getting it all together. So we thank you all um, for your support and your faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you're going to get started? Yeah. You want to pray? Father, we <laughs> just bless you for tonight, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing that destroys any yoke of bondage and remove any burden. So, Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus that, that you just move us out the way and you, and you just decrease, Father God, hide us behind the cross in Jesus' name. And we just ask, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you just stir up revelation and you stir up um, just um, knowledge, Father God, and just uh, the Holy Spirit have its way tonight, Father God, and be the teacher and preacher of your word tonight. In Jesus' name, he'll deliver set free tonight. Stir up the apostolic and the prophetic anointing, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do tonight, Father God. And we just are excited and anticipate what you're going to do through the precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Amen. So I'll be back at the end. You're going to have a wonderful time with Pastor Sean. And I will see you all when we do ministry. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight um, I'm going to talk about... Um, my topic is hunger for God. And so I was kind of wrestling with that topic. It was hunger or hunger for God. I just decided on hunger for God. The Holy Spirit has been dealing with me about the uh, Beatitudes, um, which was affectionately known the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus talked about blessed, blessed and, or blessed or blessed. He was talking about different things and he was preaching to people about different, different things about basically about our character and basically how just different things about life he, um, that those are the Beatitudes have different 
uh, things that we can apply to our life about different things. And and I talked about um, early. I did a I did a message about the uh, pure in heart in Matthew five eight, where it says, "Blessed are blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." I did another one on. Blessed are the Matthew 5 3, where it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So I believe that he's basically trying to get me to do a theme on the uh, Beatitudes. And so tonight, um, I'm going to do it on Matthew 5 6. So if you have your Bibles, go to Matthew 5 6 or your iPads or whichever thing that you use to read the Bible, your iPhones. And this is Matthew 5 6. And I'm going to talk about our hunger for God. And this is the theme scripture I'm going to use, Matthew 5, 6. And it says, and this is the English Standard Version. It says, blessed, or that word in the Greek literally means empowered to prosper, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Or the New King James uh, says, filled. And so... It's a lot to this, so I'm going to try to be as short as, as possible. But um, he says, blessed or power to prosper are those who hunger. And I'm going to talk about hunger later on and thirst. And I'm going to talk about that for righteousness. And we understand that righteousness is right standing with God. And he says, for they shall be satisfied. And we'll talk about that. So we're going to kind of um, really kind of break down this scripture. And so, um, as I was looking at this, the I was looking at another translation of this in the Amplified, where it says, blessed, again, empowered to prosper, inwardly, well, actually, um, it's blessed, empowered to prosper, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. So again, as we break this scripture down, there are things, first of all, he said that we are blessed as we do these things. One of the things that our um, apostles, our pastors always says is that um, we just can't sit back and expect God to do everything for us. There are things that we are required to do. Some, A lot of the scriptures are conditional, meaning that... Um, there are things that God has already done, but there are things that he requires from us. And so here he's saying that the people who are blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness or right standing. He, and he said that when you do those things or the people who do those things, they will be satisfied. Now, uh, you know, the world always comes up with different themes about how to be satisfied. They have a... a Snickers commercial who says that if you eat that you'll be satisfied and just different things that the world system I should say gives us um, their uh, definition of satisfaction but the kingdom and what Jesus definition of how to be satisfied or filled is when we hunger and thirst after righteousness and so the Amplified it says that um, that that when we do these things we are blessed number one when we in it, it, it when we inwardly peaceful and spiritually secure and, and it talks about worthy of respect and and Matthew 5 5 but then it says that when we do these things we it we are joyful we get nourished by God's goodness now we all want to have that joy the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength but then he says that that when we hunger and thirst after after him and his righteousness it says that now we are nourished by god's goodness and then he says that after that he says when we actively seek right standing with god so it's not just a one-day thing it's a everyday process that we should be doing this he says he said those who actively seek right standing with god he says they will be completely satisfied so again there are things that we need to do and one of the things, and this is the time, and of course, we are in this pandemic and most people are teleworking, um, except for the first responders and people who have to go in. But I know for myself and a lot of people, um, we are teleworking. So this is the time where we should be 
I know for myself, um, we should be actively seeking God. We should be actively hungering and thirsting for his righteousness. Um, and I know that's something that I need to continue to do and I need to do more on a regular basis because what the flesh and what the enemy will try to get you to do is kind of just relax and say, you know, I'm at home, you know, I'm chilling out, I'm doing my work, but not seeking God and actively, and it says actively seeking the right standing with God or seeking his right standing, the word says. And so that that's something that um, I know for me is something that I definitely need to improve on in this season because the bottom line is that this season of COVID-19 and we and uh, the saints are praying and we're praying this season is coming to a close as people get their vaccinations and everything goes into that and that um, eventually there are people that will be going back to the office. So this is a time that we cannot um, use as just a point of just relaxing. We need to take advantage of this time by actively seeking God. So as I start the message, we all need God. And there is a famine in the land, but not for food, but for the word. And I'm going get, get, to get to that scripture in a minute. And so, as we talked about Matthew 5, 6, and the question we really need to ask ourselves is, how much do we really want God? Now, that's only a question that you and God can answer. I can't answer it for you, only God. I know for me... Um, I know that I need God even more in this time than I did 10 years ago or when I first got saved, um, which will be uh, 23, 24 years come September. And so this is a time when you when I really need God to step up and I really need God to be there. Um, the Bible says in Psalms 37 is that if I desire my I, my desires. If if I delight myself in Him, He will give me the desires of of my heart. Meaning that He will put the desires that I want in me, His desires in me, as I delight myself in Him. And so, again, how much do we really want God? How much do we really want God to bless us? How much do we really want God? Meaning that. Do we really want a personal relationship with him? Not so much things, because we know the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, that seek ye first the kingdom, his way, his organization and his government. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, right standing with God. And the Bible says all these things shall be added. So it's not so much about things. It's about seeking him first. And so how much do we really want God? How much do we really want to be his kingdom to come in us and then so we can go out and demonstrate it. So, another question, are we completely satisfied with the time reading and hearing the word? Now, again, I talked about how a lot of us have a lot of time, I wouldn't say free time because a lot of us are working, but there are, there are, there's more time than we did when we uh, were going into the office that we have time to maybe get up a little earlier or maybe um, before we go to bed or whatever time that we have free to actually spend time reading and hearing the word and hearing his voice. And that's one thing that I know that I am, I need to do a better job in. myself personally. I can't speak for anybody else, but myself personally, I need to do a better job of just spending time with him, not just, just reading a bunch of scriptures and saying a little quick prayer and going to bed. I need to really get into the word I really need to meditate on the word. I really need to pray and I really need to hear his voice because when we do that, we do that for direction. And it goes right along with the scripture about where it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. See, it's not just about, okay, well, I, I have a reading plan. You know, a lot of people have Bible reading plans, which is fine and that's good, but that can become mechanical and that can come out that can become religious when you just say, well, I've read uh, one chapter uh, a day, which is great, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But are you really asking God or asking the Holy Spirit 
for that revelation? Are you really meditating? Are you really getting into the word and asking God through the Holy Spirit, what does this mean and how does this apply to my life? And really dig deep into the word. And so that through the word, his voice can come in and then through, the, through his word, um, you can clearly get direction and purpose for your life. And so, and again, we know that the word does that when you read and meditate on the word along with prayer and, and all the things that, that, that are involved in that, you know that, that you are really seeking him. You are really hungering and thirsting for his righteousness or just for him. So it's not just about reading the word. It's, it's, it's more just seeking him. And we do that through his word and meditation and all that goes with that. And so, um, Joshua 1 8. Let's go there um, real quick. The book of Joshua, very familiar scripture. In the book of Joshua 1 8. And I'm going to uh, read this from the um, New English Translation. This is Joshua 1 8 from the New English Translation. It says, This law or this scroll. This law scroll must not leave your lips. You must memorize it day and night so you can carefully obey all that is written in it. Then you will prosper and be successful. And so he says um, in verse 7 of Joshua 1, 7, let me go back. He says, make sure you are very strong and brave. Carefully obey all the law my servant Moses charged you to keep. Do not swerve from to, do not swerve from it to the right or to the left so that you may be successful in all you do. So this scripture and what the Holy Spirit has given us is the is 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 the um is the actual plan to be successful in, in in according to the kingdom. And the plan to be successful is when we meditate on the word, is when we memorize the word. That word actually means mutter and when we do these things, the Bible says that we will make our way prosperous and we will have good success. Meditate on it day and night, meaning that don't read it just for Sunday and come back and don't read it again till Sunday. Or if you have a Bible study, just kind of get it in. That means it has to be an everyday thing. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, I got responsibilities. I have to work. I have kids. And I understand that. I do, too. I have a wife. I have a son. But still... A lot of times we have to sacrifice and make time for that, whether it's getting up earlier in the morning or whether it's lunchtime or whether it's before we go to bed, while the kids are asleep or whatever time that you have, we need to make time for God. Amen. And that's what Jesus was saying when he was saying, blessed are they who thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied or filled. So as we go on. I said that um, how much do we really want God? Are we completely satisfied with the times read with, with the time reading and hearing the word? Another question is, are we completely satisfied with the amount of time in the presence of God? See, it's one thing to read the word, it's one thing to hear the word, it's one thing to um, just have a Bible reading plan and and you know, and actually there are a lot of people who like to hear the word on video or hear the word, you know, through their iPad or various devices, and that's great, and we should be doing that. But there's another, when, when you go to another level, is when you actually take the time to pray. I know Apostle, our Apostle Linda always talks about praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, and when you take the time, not just to pray to him, but when you take the time to hear back from him, and when you spend time with him to spend time in his presence and when you're praising him for who he is and praising him for what he's done in your life not for things because it's easy to say well okay well I, I praise you god because i have a place to live which is good and i praise you god because i have food to eat and you should do that but sometimes you can just spend time in his presence for just being who who he is and and acknowledging who he is and then when we acknowledge who he is through praise and through worship, then his presence comes and ministers to us. And so, um, you know, a further example is that uh, the first thing um, that I know I do when I get up in the morning and the first my prayer 
is to say, God, thank you for waking me up because there are a lot of people who are not waking up. I, I just saw there was an actress who died in her sleep um, just last night. So there are people who are who are dying and leaving here. So that's the number one for just waking for just waking us up and just acknowledging who He is. I mean, God has many covenant names like Elohim, Creator, El Shaddai, Sustainer, and Nourisher, and El Elyon, the Most High God. He is omnipotent, meaning that He is all powerful. He is omniscient, meaning He's all knowledgeable, and He is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. See, that's part of praising God, and that's part of getting getting into the presence of God when you're acknowledging who he is. And it's just like in the model prayer when when he starts off when, when he says uh talks about hallowed be thy name and it talks about uh uh Jesus was teaching the disciples about the model prayer of how to how to really pray and giving them a model about what prayer looks like. And he's starting off by by by, by talks about that. So um anyway let, let's go there real quick and in uh, Matthew chapter 6. I wasn't going to go there, but the Holy Spirit said go there. So uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 9, he says, In this manner, therefore pray. So Jesus is giving them a model prayer. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Or another translation says, um, in the New English translation, it says, So pray this way. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. And so, in other words, again, that's we want to be in the presence of God, but to be in the presence of God, Jesus told his disciples that you have to honor the name of God. You have to honor who he is. And that way, um, the presence, you, you can get in the presence of God. It's not just coming to God and using God as like a Santa Claus saying, well, God, I need this, I need that, I need that. Now, there's nothing wrong with the prayer petition. I understand that. But the model prayer, the way Jesus has modeled it and taught his disciples and what he teaches us is that before we do all that, it's time to praise him. It's time to honor his name because that's what he made us. The Bible talks about how, how he made us to praise his name and how we were made to praise him, that he created us to praise him. Amen. So. Are we completely satisfied with the amount of time in the presence of God? Let's go to Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. Old Testament. And this is when he was dealing with Israel. And they were doing things that was not right. And they were um, kind of doing a lot what the body of Christ as a whole is doing. And when I say the body of Christ, I mean the body of Christ as a whole, meaning that they were um, acting like they were, they loved God, and but they were doing things that wasn't pleasing in the sight of God. And, and if you go into the context, they were doing things like uh, trampling over the poor. They were doing things like um, they were selling, they were like selling things and then, then getting money that that wasn't used for the poor and they were doing just different things like that 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 god was not pleased with and then they would turn around and then they would say well i i know I, that i did this but god i still want to praise your name and i still want you to bless me and sometimes that's what we do we we are not doing what god has is required um from us and then we still expect blessings to come from god and God is saying no. God's saying that when you honor me and when you are doing what I have um, commanded to, to do, and we know that commandments is the commandment of love and this dispensation of grace, we know that he will bless us. But when we do things, and they were doing a lot of things that they thought they were getting away with, but we know that God sees, sees all, and they were doing underhanded stuff and thinking that, Okay, well, I can do that and get away with it and still expect God to bless me. And so, but God reckon, uh, recognized that and he spoke through the prophet Amos. And he says in verse um, 11, this is the New English translation. He says, be certain of this. The time is coming, says the sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a shortage of food or water, 
but an end to divine revelation. And verse 12 says, people will stagger from sea to sea and from the north around to the east. They will wander about looking for a revelation from the Lord, but they will not find any. And so we have to understand that he was using prophet Amos to prophesy um, different things. First, he was using the nation of Israel, but also we can apply that to today. When we do stuff that is not pleasing to God and when we fail to honor his name and when we fail to um, obey and honor him and, and walking in his purpose and when we fail to delight ourselves in him, then therefore we are in danger of, of, of having a famine in the land. And, and in a lot of ways that's what's happening because we have a lot of things going on um, we have church, but not necessarily the word is going forth. And there's a difference. You can have church, but not necessarily if the if revelation or divine revelation is coming from the prophetic is not being brought forth and God is not really into the service, then you're just having church, but you're not inviting the Holy Spirit of God for divine revelation. And that's something that we need. We need to hear from God through the prophetic word through the uh, rhema word, through the Logos word. That's what we need to hear. And so he was uh, prophesying here to the nation of Israel saying that you cannot expect to be in sin and you cannot expect to do things behind my back and expect to get away with it and then expect to come to me and expect to hear a word through my prophet. And that's what Amos was telling them. And so we need to be careful that we repent uh, repent means not just to say I'm sorry, but it's but it's 180 degree degrees, 180 degree turn and says we have to change our mind and say, look, I repent of things and of that that I've done that is displeasing in your sight. And now I want to do what you have called me to do. And I want to hear and obey your word. And so that's what um, Amos 8 was dealing with. So as we go on, when we hunger and thirst for God. His character will be evident in our lives. See, hunger, when he says, Jesus says, when we hunger and thirst for God, his character comes on us because we are hungering and thirst for his righteousness. And when we do that, we are seeking him. And so when we do that, then his character comes on us and then we can, um, we can walk and we can uh, emulate his character and say, God, this is how you did it. And this is how I want to be. Just like the, the Bible says, it, it talks about that, um, that, that when we see him, we will be just like him. Meaning that his character will shape who we are. Okay? And that's what happens when we hunger and when we thirst after him. Is that his character will shape who we are. And then his character will shape who we are. And then other people will see the character of God and the character of Jesus flowing through us. And then we can bring people in the kingdom and explain to them that that comes from a seeking, that comes from a uh, hungering, that comes from a thirsting about seeking him. And then his character will fall on us. And then we're able to bring others in the kingdom and bless and honor him. And he will be honored. He will be glorified through the way we live and when we are walking according to his character. Amen. So the satisfaction, and we talked about, um, it says that uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. The satisfaction comes by responding to being in a relationship with him. In other words, we are satisfied when, when we hunger and thirst after him because he's saying that, that we are satisfied because we are responding to God by saying that I'm hungering and thirsting after you because I want a relationship with you. I want to know you. I want to just, I, I just don't want to know just about you. See, when we read the word, we are reading about God. But when we are hungering and thirsting for God, we, are, we, we want to know God on a personal, intimate level. That's what Jesus was talking about. So that's where the satisfaction comes. When, when he says that we'll be satisfied, meaning that we are, will be completely satisfied in our spirit because we want to know God on an intimate and personal level. 
And that's what Christianity is all about. And that's what separates Christianity from other religions is that we have we can have a personal relationship with the God that we serve. It's not anything, not by works and not by uh, things that we, we can do, but it's just by seeking him, it's by hungering and thirsting after him, where now we can say, okay, God, I know you, um, and I want a personal relationship with him. It's just like when Moses, in the Old Testament, the Bible says that, but that that the people knew his his acts, but Moses knew his ways. Moses knew him face to face. Moses knew him. The Bible talks about how Moses actually uh, knew God face to face, and he and he actually had an intimate relationship with God. Um, even so, where after he spent time with God, um, he actually had to put a veil over his face. Because um, the glory of God shined through him. So he actually had a personal and intimate relationship with God because he spent time with God. And, of course, we know that that's under the old covenant. Now, we, under the new covenant, we under the new covenant of grace, know that we can all go boldly to the throne of grace. And we can all, he desires for all of us to have a personal relationship with him. And he desires for all of us to spend time and... Um, and just spend time with him in his presence. Amen. And so Psalms 16:11 and we have to understand that when we spend time in his presence, his joy overwhelms us when we are in his presence. See, we always talk about the joy and I talked about that the last service about the difference between joy and happiness. Um but when we really want the joy of the Lord um, we have to spend time in his presence and that that will signify that we have the joy of the Lord when we spend time in his presence not just on Sunday but on an everyday basis and so Psalm 1611 in the English Standard Version says it's a very familiar scripture it says you make known to me the path of life and we're going to talk about that in a second in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That's Psalm 1611 in the um, English Standard Version. And so, and so he's given he's given us the path of joy. It's in his presence. Matter of fact, in Psalm 1611 in the New English Translation, it says, "You lead me in the path of life. I experience absolute joy in your presence." You always give me sheer delight. That's Psalm 1611 in the New English Translation. So, again, he, through his word, he's given us the secret of joy. And it could be, things could be, uh, circumstances could be bad. Um, a lot of things could be happening around you. But he says that he's given the secret to, to pure joy. And he's given the secret. He says that I will show you the path of life. It's in my presence. And so we're going to get into the path of life. The path of life is his purpose for your life and where we can experience life in all its fullness. The path of life is his purpose. And when we are in his presence, see, we always talk about, well, what is our purpose? And that's one of the questions that I think all of us ask as believers. What is our purpose, God? Why are we here? What did you create me for? Well, he's saying that I will give you that, that answer, um, the path of life, as you get into my presence. And I just talked about earlier about how, how to get in his presence by praise and worship and honoring his name. And honoring his name. And so, let me say that again. The path of life is his purpose for your life and where we can experience life in all its fullness. Proverbs 12, 28, in the English Standard Version says... In the path of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. That's Proverbs 12, 28 in the English Standard Version. It says, in the path of righteousness. So there's a path of righteousness. What is that path of righteousness? When you get into his presence and he will, he will show you the purpose. But there's a path of righteousness. He said, in the path of righteousness is life. So you experience life when you hunger and thirst after righteousness and when you seek him and, and you get into and you get into that path of seeking his righteousness we talked about matthew 6 33 earlier 
then it says that that's life. And in his pathway, there's no death. See, there's no death when you are in his presence. There's no death. It's only life. Because Jesus said himself, John 14, 6, that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except he come through me. Jesus is our life. And when we are seeking him, then there is life. There, Jesus is our life. Okay? And so, as we go on, in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, Jesus is speaking again in verses 13 through 14, English Standard Version. He says, and this scripture I was studying because a lot of people use this scripture as sort of a, um, uh, let me say, as a scare tactic and say, well, you know, he says, enter by the narrow gate. Well, what does that really mean? So I studied that. And so that's, well, well let me read it first. Matthew 7, 13 through 14 in the English Standard Version. He says, enter by the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Now, when we read that, um, a lot of people use that scripture saying, well, you got to enter by the narrow gate, and those who don't enter by the narrow gate are going to hell. Which, they're right, but they don't really explain it and get to the meat of what Jesus was actually trying to convey. Um, basically, he was talking about two things that prevent people from entering the narrow gate. And he's speaking um, figuratively about a, about a gate. And we know when we have a gate that sometimes it opens narrowly or sometimes you may have a gate that opens wide. And so there are two things that he is speaking of that lead to, the, that, that lead to destruction, okay? He says, uh, enter by the narrow gate for the gate that is wide and the way is, is, is easy that leads to destruction. So he's saying those who enter by the wide gate or those who are taking another path, uh, basically what he was saying is that that way is easy, but that way leads to destruction. So two things that people who are entering the wide gate the reason why that happens is that number one is that they they are seeking the approval of man okay and when you seek the approval of man and don't seek the approval of god and you're not uh hearing and obey his voice but you are seeking the approval of god i'm um, of man and not god then therefore you are choosing the wide gate you are choosing that that path which leads to destruction okay so we have to be careful when, when God is dealing with us, when God is speaking to us, that we are not seeking the approval of man, but we're seeking the approval of God. Now, I'm not saying that, that we, don't, um, we don't need to go to people for, um, for, for godly counsel. I'm not saying that we do need godly counsel because the Bible says in the multitude of counselors there is safety. But I'm talking about when we go to, to when we need a decision to make from God and God is dealing with us stuff, and that we choose the uh, man's approval, we choose man's ways instead of God's ways. And then we choose to go with, with uh, man's ways, which is a, under the worldly system of things, which is governed by the enemy, other than choosing what God has done. So that's number one, seeking the approval of man. Seeking the approval of man and not God will lead to destruction and eternal punishment and separation from God. Okay, that's number one. And number two is when we yield to the world system. And I talked about this all the time. Um, let's go first John chapter two about what the definition of the of the world or the worldly system entails. And so in first John chapter two, very familiar scripture. I've said this before. So this is first John chapter two, and, and I'm gonna read this out of the New English translation. It says, verse 15, do not love the world or the world system or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world or world system, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16 says, because all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh and the desire of the eyes and the arrogance produced by material possessions 
is not from the Father, but is from the world or the world system. And the world or the world system is passing away with all its desires. See, the world system has its own desires. But the person who does the will of God remains forever. So we just talked about things that were that will lead that person to eternal destruction um, is the seeking the approval of man and also um, yielding to the worldly system. Those are two things that were that that Jesus was was talking about that will lead the people to eternal destruction. That gate that's wide. And he said that the gate is wide. And because that that the world system or the enemy may think it's the easy route. It's, it's the easy route just to yield to the world and just to seek the approval of man. But Jesus said that if we go that way, that way will lead us to destruction. And he said those who enter by it are many. So we're living in a time where a lot of people are yielding to those ways and then they're getting the results. See, if you yield to uh, that, that way and open up the gate and go by the gate that is wide, then it's going to yield, you're going to yield those results. But if you do it God's way, which, which he says that um, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few. See, the narrow way is when you hear and obey God. The narrow way is when you are walking in your purpose. The narrow way is when you have a personal relationship with him or intimate relationship with him. And a lot of people are not willing to sacrifice that, um, to sacrifice their own um, time and sacrifice, like Romans 12 says, they are not willing to um, talk about their bodies as a living sacrifice, yield their bodies as a living sacrifice. They are not willing to renew their mind. And I'm speaking of the body as Christ as a whole. When we are not willing to sacrifice and do those things what Jesus said, then therefore, um, by means that we, that, that we don't even know, a lot of times that we don't even know, we're going that path. The path that that is easy in the, and opening and going by the path where the gate is wide instead of going by the narrow path and it's easy to get on that that path because um, idle time and because we're not reading the word when we're supposed to because we're not praying and we're not spending time in his presence then when we're not doing those things then we're going by that other way so and so that's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew seven thirteen through fourteen. And so as we go on, the Bible says in Acts 4.12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And the reason why I brought that scripture up, because when we are yielding to the world system, or when we're seeking approval to man, then we are um, actually pushing Jesus, pushing God out the picture. And God says here that, that I'm the way. I'm the only way. There's no other name among men um, by which a person can be saved other than the name Lord Jesus. And I know we have people who, who believe that there's more than one way to get to God and all this stuff. But Jesus said um, here, God says that there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, the word saved doesn't mean just the salvation of our souls, but it actually means deliverance. It actually means um, the term in the Greek means to be rescued. It means to be rescued like someone drowning. If someone is drowning and someone comes to rescue you and pulls you out of the water, then he is rescued. So it literally means deliverance also. And so when he says that... Uh, where we must be saved, he's talking about deliverance. He's talking about all the aspect of salvation. It's almost like in John chapter three, when Nicodemus came to Jesus, he's he talked about um, uh, he went to Jesus. Well, let's go there in John chapter three, and let's see some things here. In John chapter three, he says that now a certain man, a Pharisee, is named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. This John chapter three. 
in New English translation, he said, came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Verse 3, Jesus replied, I tell you the solemn truth, unless a person is born from above or born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, born from above is actually the little of Greek. And so, in other words, um, what Jesus was saying is that you must be born from above if you want to live above the world system. And we must be born anew. We must be born up from above. We must be born again. And so, and we have to understand that that's how we live above the world system. When we understand that it's more than just um, acknowledging that Jesus is our Lord. Yes, that's the start. But now we, may, we must have to continue to renew our mind through the word of God. We have to continue to honor his name. We continue to live a holy lifestyle in front of him. We have to continue to read and meditate on the word so that we can grow into the stature and conform into the image of Jesus Christ. And we must continue to live. See, that's why I don't believe in the one saved, always saved. Because it's a continual process. Salvation is a continual process. That's why Jesus said himself that um, in Matthew 24, 14, that he talks about those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So it's a continual, continual process. Amen? So, as we go on, a lot of people, especially, I know young people think that being saved is boring. But here Jesus says in John 10.10, 10, this is the Amplified Version, he says, The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life, that, that they may have and enjoy life, and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So we have to understand that being saved is, is, is not a boring existence. It's actually the greatest thing you can do. It's the most exciting thing you can do. Um, and it's not just to escape hell and go to heaven, but Jesus said here that that uh, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you may have and enjoy life. See, he wants us to enjoy life and enjoy life in him and enjoy life actually in the natural, but actually enjoy life in him, in our spirit, because he is the life. And so he says, and have it in abundance, to the, to the full, till it overflows. It's just when you pour um, a liquid beverage into a glass and we know it overflows. That's how he wants our life to be while we're in him. He wanted to overflow and be in abundance. So that's what he was saying here. So we have to understand that when we hunger and thirst um, and seek God and seek Jesus, then the Bible says we'll be completely satisfied and that we will have that abundant life that, that and enjoy life that he wants us all to have. Not just, oh, well, you know, I'm going through this test and trials. And we go through tests and trials. We talked about that. We preached about that. That's all part of the plan. But he also wants us to enjoy life. You can enjoy life even in the midst of uh, trials and tests. Because why? Because you are you know him and you have a personal relationship with him. And if you have a personal intimate relationship with Jesus, you can still enjoy life even in the midst of certain circumstances that are not favorable or even in certain circumstances that, that, that does not um, seem uh, great in the world system and even in the midst of tests and trials. So as we go on and... Um, the question we need, and I'm asking a lot of questions, that's the Holy Spirit put in me, um, that the question that we ask, um, and that I'm asking is between you and God to ask. It says, what are we putting ahead of God? What are we putting ahead of God? See, the order uh, is always God first, family, and then ministry. And we have to understand that sometimes we tend to juggle the order. You know, there are some people who put family over God. There's some people who put ministry over family. There's some people who put uh, family and ministry over God. But God has to come first. The order, again, is God, family, and ministry. And I know that for me that I have to do a good job in making sure that I don't put ministry over family, over my wife, over my son, over my family. At the same token... Though the balance is I have to make sure that I put God first over them. 
because God and ministry are, are two different things. See, ministry is doing the things, doing the works, and doing what we are called to do because we are saved, and that's important. But when we honor God, we are saying, okay, God, I'm putting you first, and we're having an intimate relationship with God, so therefore I'm putting God first, and God is the center of my life over everything. And so Jesus made a great statement in Matthew 10. You can go there, Matthew 10. In Matthew 10, starting, um, and, and for homework, I, I, I definitely um, uh, advise you to read the whole chapter. But in Matthew chapter 10, starting at 34, starting at verse 34, he says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come, verse 35, to set a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, and a daughter-in-law against his mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Now, when you initially read that, if you don't actually go back and study it, he's not saying that, that your enemies will be your family. Well, you, no, he's not saying that. He was just saying that you, you must put priority. You must, I have to come as priority over them. See, he was just saying, put your priorities in order. And th that's what he was saying. He was saying that um, we cannot say, well, if, if I had a choice between God and my family, I'm going to choose my family. No, he was saying that I must come before them. And then when you put me first, I'm going to bless your family. I'm going to bless everything you do with them. And so he goes on and says, he who loves, verse 37, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Okay, so in other words, when you put them them over God, he's saying that you're not worthy of me. Meaning that when you put priority in them, instead of putting priority in God first, and then you and then you put priority in them. Remember what I said, it's God, family, and then ministry. Or when you put ministry over 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 God, actually, you can do that also. When you put ministry over God, then therefore you are not worthy of me. And then he goes on in 38, he says, And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Then he says, He who receives, he who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. And then he goes on in verse 41 and 42. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives, verse 42, whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So in other words, he was putting priority. He was saying, put your priorities first. Put me first. And then if you put me first, then all other things will come in place. Your family will come together. Um, your ministry will come together. Your purpose will come together. Everything will come together as you put me first. Amen? Amen. So, as we go on, the word hungry in the Greek is the word pinano, P-E-I-N-A-O, which means to hunger, be hungry, to suffer want, to be needy, to crave ardently, to seek with eager desire. See, the enemy will try to use circumstances to keep you from the presence of God. See, that's what the enemy wants. The enemy does not want us to, to be in the presence of God because he understands that in the presence of God, he can't dwell. But, but I just talked about earlier about how to get in the presence of God and how he will show you the path of life. And so he doesn't want us to get in the presence of God. Now, the enemy can use things. The enemies can, th those enemies... Uh, the enemy will try to use circumstances to keep you from the presence of God. And those enemies can be people. Those enemies can be a financial uh, burden. Those enemies can be depression. Those enemies can be um, or sickness to stop you from that place of peace that is only found in his presence. So there are different things that the enemy will try to use to stop you from, from getting in the presence of God. Because he understands that when you get in the presence of God, then he will show you things. And he will uh, show you things that, that he wants from you. He's going, to, he's going to give you his unconditional love. And he's going to give you his path and, or his purpose of, about why he created you. And that's what the enemy does not want. And so in Psalm 42, this is a very familiar scripture. Psalm 42, go there. 
Psalm 42. And this is David. When David was, um, when the enemies of David was coming against him, and not only were they were trying to uh, discourage him and kill him, but they were trying to keep him from the presence of God. And so David, who had a personal relationship with God, uh, he knew what to do. And in Psalm 42, he starts off um, in verse 1, he says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. Verse 2 says, My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So even though uh, there were certain, there were, there were a lot of people coming against God, there were his sons, one of his sons tried to kill him. There were uh, different people who, who wanted to discourage God, uh, David. And David knew how to get in the presence of God. David knew, okay, if I can just get to the sanctuary, if I just get into the presence of God, then I know that God is going to give me the answer. God is going to give me the direction that I need to move on. And so that's what they would discourage him. It wasn't so much they were trying to kill him. Yes, they were trying to kill him, but they were trying to discourage him from getting into the presence of God. And we have to be careful because the enemy will try to use circumstances to try to get us depressed or, tr or use people to try to get us from the presence of God. And David said, if I can just get before God, I know he will give me the answer. And so he says, verse 3, my tears have been my food day and night while they why they continually say to me. So there's people, where is your God? So right then people were trying to say, well, David, all these things are going on. So where, where is your God? But David said, but if I get into the presence of God, then he's going to give me the answer because David, David knew the secret. David knew that if I get in the presence of God, he's going to give me the answer. And he knew because God, because he is, uh, because he has done it before. Like Ty Tribbett's song says, if, if, if he did it before, he would do it again. So in other words, if, if he has given me victories before, he's going to give me victories now. And so that's what he was saying. And so they were trying to discourage him, talking about, where's your God? But verse 4, he says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. So he says, when I remember the victories and the things that you've delivered me for before, I know that if I get into your presence, and I pour out my soul, I know that you're going to do it again because God is faithful. And so he says, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. And then, but then what was happening is that, that, that because people would discourage him, then that, that spirit of depression can come quickly. So we need to be careful that, it, um, that we don't allow a spirit of depression to come on us when circumstances or tests and trials come our way. See, how do we deal with depression? We get into the presence. We praise and worship. That's how we deal with depression. See, the enemy will try to put depression on you when, you are, when we are not spending the proper time getting in his presence. And so, verse 5, he says, why are you cast down on my soul? So he's speaking to his own soul through his spirit. He says, why are you cast down on my soul and why are you disquieted within me? Um, and so verse, verse 5 in the New English translation said, why are you depressed on my soul? Why are you upset? Wait for God. See, he's, he, see this Holy Spirit, the Spirit is giving him the answer. He says, wait for God, for I will again give thanks to my God for his saving intervention. intervention. That's Psalms 42 verse 5 in the New English translation. Then he says, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of the Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mazar. So he was talking about, I remember when you gave me the victory over, um, on that land. I remember when you gave me victory over there. I remember when you did all this for me. So that's what you have to do is that you have to put God in remembrance of what he has already done. See, that's what God wants for, wants for us, to get us to his presence and praise him and remember the victories about what he's already done for us. Amen? A lot of times we forget when things come our way that's not favorable, we forget about what he's done in the past. Amen? And so, as we go on, and these are, uh, I'm going to read a couple of more verses and then I'm going to end. Uh, Psalm 91, one, and this is very familiar scripture. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shelter of the Almighty. And so we, we quote Psalm 91 a lot, but we have to understand that everything in Psalm 91 is contingent on the very first verse, meaning that 
he or she who dwells in the shelter of the Most High or abides in his presence, the Most High means El Elyon, that, that's a name of, of, of what it means to, to have the Most High God with you, is his name is El Elyon. So I can say he who dwells in the shelter of, of, of El Elyon will abide in the shelter of the Almighty. And then, of course, you know the rest of Psalm 91 as you get into that, but we know that the first verse, you have to do the first verse and to be and so everything can flow on the rest of the Psalms 91. And so let's go to John 7 37, the book of John. Two more scriptures, and then we're done. John 7. And in John 7, This is the uh, great day of the feast. Actually, this is on the last day of the feast. And we know, if you, if you read and study that day, they had a lot of festivals and feasts throughout the year. And so this is when, this is on the last day. And so Jesus said this in John 7, 37. He says, on the last day, this is John 7, 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, or literally out of his uh, belly, will flow rivers of living water. But this, verse 39, he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. In other words, the Holy Spirit um, could not be fully manifested until he went to be with the Father. We know that Jesus said plenty of times that that um, that when I go to the Father, I will not um, make you orphans or I, I will not leave you comfortless for the Holy Spirit will come and he will be um, the person that will, that, that will not just come upon you but will be in you and he will be the one to lead and guide you into all truth. So that's what he was saying in uh, verse 39. And so, I, well, I said that scripture to say, true thirst for God is to know him personally. When that happens, we will be satisfied forever. So, it's not just one of those things where we can um, thirst for God on Sunday and not get into his presence until the next week and expect to be satisfied. He's saying that this should be an everyday process. It should be an everyday thing that we seek him and seek to get into his presence. And that's why we'll be eternally satisfied. And so, true thirst for God is to know him personally. And when that happens, we will be satisfied forever. Because what we're doing is that we are replenishing our spirit. Just like we know, in the natural, you have to, in the natural, you have to replenish your body with food. Well, it's the same thing in the spirit. When we uh, seek him on an everyday basis, we are nourishing our spirit. Amen? And so... Now, it, when we do that, we are now thinking eternally. God now begins to work on our hearts so we can be a blessing to others. See, when we seek God and when we hunger and thirst for his righteousness, then what we're doing is that we are saying, okay, God, I'm seeking you to be satisfied and then we can show others how to get that satisfaction that's not just a temporary satisfaction that, that, that you may get in, in, in your natural for just being hungry. And you just you just get get some food, but when you get some food in the natural, if you don't eat again, then then you're going to be hungry again, and you're going to need to replenish. But this is something that that is an eternal satisfaction, and that's what he's saying. Um, as you hunger and thirst for righteousness, and as you hunger and thirst after seeking God, he said this thirst is eternal. This thirst will satisfy you um, for eternity, just like he uh, told um, the woman at the well in. Uh, John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, very familiar, very familiar scripture in John chapter 4, when the woman came to the well and she was a Samaritan, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, I'm just going to read uh, John 4, 13 and 14, and you can read it when you get home. Um, John 4, 13, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Verse 14 says, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So, again, Jesus was telling the Samaritan woman 
the water that I give you is not going to be this, this natural water that, that you're giving me now because Jesus was thirsty at the time. He says that the water that I'm going to give you will give you everlasting life and that will last eternity, for eternity. And so, again, we're talking about Matthew 5, 6, and we're talking about blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And so, last two scriptures, Proverbs 4.23 in the English Standard Version says, keep your heart with all diligence or diligence for from it flow the springs of life. So in other words, he was saying that make sure that we diligently seek God with all of our heart. And if we do that, he says, from flow will spring the issues of life or spring the things that he will manifest himself to us and we will give us that direction. He says, so keep our hearts directed toward him. Keep our hearts directed unto his word. Keep our hearts directed into meditating on his word and praying, praying and seeking and hearing his voice. So keep our heart directed. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah 26, 3, where it talks about peace, it says that I will keep him in perfect peace as his mind is stayed on him because I trust in, in him. So, and uh, last scripture is Isaiah 58, 11. And this is when, those of you familiar with Isaiah 58, you familiar about he's he's uh, directing people about how to do a proper fast. Um, and I'm not going through that whole thing, uh, the Isaiah 58, read when you get home. But if you go through the fast properly and effectively, like God was dealing with uh, the people through the prophet Isaiah, he says that when you do it effectively, the Bible says in Isaiah 58, 11, and that's part of hungering and thirsting from God, is that when you pray and when you fast, fasting is a part of I know uh, a lot of people don't want to hear about fasting because they just don't like fasting, but fasting is a part of it. Fasting is a part of this life, and it's a part of hungering and thirsting for God. It's not just to lose weight, although people do lose weight because of fasting, but fasting, actually the purpose for, past, for fasting is to crucify your flesh or some things that the enemy or the flesh is cutting up, but it's also to change your mind and to change your direction about, about the things that you are going through. And not to change God, because the Bible says that, that I am God and I change not. But it's, it, it, the purpose of fasting is to crucify that flesh. It's also to change, change your mind and change what, what you are thinking about. And it's telling that flesh is that you're not going to rule over my spirit. It's going to be my spirit that, that's going to rule over, over the flesh. And we know the scripture in Galatians where it says that, that the spirit in the flesh is always doing a tug of war for our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. And sometimes we give in to the flesh, and then we have those results. And then sometimes when we yield to the spirit, we have those results. Amen? So last scripture before I end is Isaiah 58, 11. Is in the New English translation, it says, The Lord will continually lead you. This is when you do a fast effectively. This is what God will do for you. He says, Isaiah 58 11, the Lord will continually lead you. See, He will lead you. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us in all truth. He will feed you even in part reason, meaning that He will nourish our soul. He will nourish our spirit even in, in times of adversity and in times of, of, of tests and trials. He said he will feed you even in parts reason. He will give you renewed strength. So he will strengthen us. The Bible says, you know, Philippians 4.13, that I can do all things through Christ which strengthen us. And you will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring that continually produces water. So he says that when, when you seek me, when you pray, when you fast, and, and you are doing it with the right motives, and you're doing it with the... Um, with the purpose of just seeking me and seeking my direction and seeking the purpose for my life, this is the, the, the result that you will get. And so, again, I'm going to end here, and um, I think my wife is coming over. And so I just want to thank, uh, thank you for tuning in tonight, and we're going to go into the next phase of, this mini of, of, our, of the ministry, which is the prophetic ministry, and my wife's going to come over and um, go into that. So God bless you and thank you. And we're going into the next phase of the ministry. God bless you. Amen, everyone. Awesome word. Amen. Sorry.
it's all about order and putting God first, right? Amen. Seek first the kingdom and all of his righteousness and all things will be added. Amen. But we got to seek him first. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and start with some prophetic ministry um, at this time. If you do have prayer requests, you can go ahead and chat them in or um, submit them in your comment box. And so that we can also take the time to pray as well. Um, I just want to share a little testimony and I hope um, it's okay. But Kimberly um, Williams had called because um, someone had stole her boy's bikes mm -hmm. and she called and we prayed and you know God just you know led us to pray that they would be returned and that you know the boys would be vindicated and amen just thought that this would be an awesome time for God to show himself strong and faithful to her sons right amen, amen. and so in the end result was that she posted something in her neighborhood kind of blog and and someone had saw it and responded and said yes i saw the bikes and i saw where they hit them mm -hmm. so her and her husband um, went out in the woods and they were looking and god blessed them god directed them right to the bikes they were able to recover them amen it was less than 24 i mean it wasn't even a whole day that by bypassed so it's just a testimony amen that you know god just wants us to show even our children you know in that instant when everything happened you know, bless Kimberly. The first thing that she did was call for prayer. Mm -hmm. She sought God first. Amen? Amen. She sought God. I mean, of course, they, they did their police report. They did everything. But she sought God. And in seeking him and putting him first, amen, then God showed himself strong on their behalf. And so the boys were able to get the bikes back. It was wonderful testimony. Um, hopefully, she'll share it with you all. But um, it was just so, so, so really I'm blessed by that. Amen. All right, so we're going to start. So our first person tonight is Cherie Sibbles. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for Cherie. We thank you, Lord, for, for a powerful woman of God, this powerful vessel that, she, that, that, that you, God, are using, God, for this season and for your kingdom. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, for her. I thank you, Lord, for her faithfulness to you, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for her prayers. And I thank you, Father God. For, for her having a relationship with you, Father God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for, for her family. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that, that she is interceding in, in, on behalf of her family. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God, that, 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 she, is, that she is interceding. And Father God, that you are right there in the midst, in the name of Jesus. I'm, and I'm hearing God says that that uh, with two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst, and I am in the midst of your prayers. I'm in the midst of everything that you're going through, and God says that you are in the right place at the right time, and God says that, that weeping may endure for the night, but joy coming in the morning. God says that he's seen your tears, and God says that the day that sow in tears will reap in joy. So God says joy is coming, daughter, and God says that, that know that the joy of the Lord is my strength, and know that um, I've seen everything that you're going through and know that I'm right there and know that your family is in the palm of my hands. So God says, don't don't stop praying. Don't stop reading. Don't stop seeking me because God says as you continue to do those things, God says that I'm going to bless your family and I'm going to bring your family out and I'm going to save your family. And God says that when you do that, I'm also going to minister to your desires, your personal desires, and I'm going to minister to them. And God says, because you are truly delighting yourself in me, and if you delight yourself in me, that, you, that I will put my desires in your heart. So God says, keep on doing what you're doing. God, God says that he loves you with an unconditional love, and God says that all, all is well, and, and God says just continue to seek me with all your heart. And God says that you will get the rewards eternally, not in, and, and in this life, but also eternally. And God says, with you, I'm well pleased. And we, we charge that to Sister Cherie right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Cherie, I just hear the Lord saying faithful. 
This is a season of faithfulness. The Lord said, I'm even increasing your faith in the season. And not the daughter that you aren't one who is faithful, the Lord said, but there's even greater faith that I am even uh, putting on you even in the season. There's even things that I'm even doing, even in your household, even in your body, the Lord said, even Lord God, to even show myself strong. But the Lord said to even begin to even increase that level of faith. The Lord said the faith to believe for the miraculous, the Lord says, the faith to see, the Lord says, the faith to do. And the Lord says, so this is a season. And he's like, not even for you, but it's your whole household. Amen. And the Lord said, your whole household, the Lord said, will see. Your whole household will begin to walk in that place of pure faith. In that place of trust, even in me. And the Lord said, and where even some have gotten discouraged and some have gotten even kind of um, weary in, in their beliefs. And the Lord said, just weary from the, uh, the, uh, the exhaustion, weary from things and the oppression, weary from even just the heaviness of things that they're dealing with, weary. And the Lord said, because every time they feel like they move forward, something else comes. The Lord said, know that I am even bringing even greater faith in this season, even to them. And the Lord said, and I'm breaking that weariness off. I'm breaking off the Lord said, even some double mindedness and the Lord said, and I'm bringing them to a place, Lord said, where there is greater trust, even in me, there's greater faith in me. The Lord said, you're going to hear it in the way they speak. You're going to hear it in what they say. And the Lord said, and even in the past when things would come and the Lord said, and it became even the reaction was even a, 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 a thing of uh, Sherman, at the same, and I just hear the word say drama. So I'm going to just say a thing of drama. The Lord said, you're not even going to see that anymore. The Lord said, you're going to see where things used to bother even you or people even in your own household. And it will you upset them. And the Lord said, and it would keep them in that place of upset or frustration. Because of this new level of faith, the Lord said, you're going to see where they just let it roll. Where they just, uh, just say, amen. That uh, You know, I trust God. God's got it. Because they're seeing God come through. And the Lord said, and it's coming through because of your faith for this and because of what you're doing and the lord says so daughter i am well pleased and the lord said and even as you have stood in the gap and intercede for your family and the lord said and even your extended family know that there is even much the lord said that i'm doing on behalf and there's even much that you have uh that people are reaping because of what you have sown in prayer and tears and the lord said and daughter know that you have covered the whole household and so the lord said daughter with you i am well pleased the lord said amen the Lord said, when you wake up in the morning, I'm the first person you talk to. When you go to bed at night, I'm the last person you talk to. And the Lord said, so this is a season that you're going to see even greater things to come. And the Lord said, an even greater blessing. And the Lord said, and I'm even doing a work in your body like never before. And the Lord said, an even greater healing is coming to you. And the Lord said, and what used to cause you pain and what used to cause you even great, Lord says, even great uh, trouble. The Lord said, you will see well, and won't anymore more. And the Lord says to so stand on my word of faith and begin to just continue to walk in that place. Allow the Lord says me to use you in this season because I'm making changes in the whole household. And the Lord said just through you daughter. So Lord I just thank you right now Father that you're strengthening her in this season. Lord, that you will gird her up, Lord God, in this season. I thank you for healing, Lord God, and the miraculous coming. I thank you for the increase of faith, not only in her, but the whole household. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. There's some reversals of things coming, because I keep doing it. There's some reversals. Some things happen, and God's going to turn it around. So, Father, I thank you right now for reversals of things to, have to come. And, Lord, we just release this to her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next person is um, Jamie Barnes, Jamie Fuentes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you, Lord, okay. for Jamie. I thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for her in the name of Jesus. Just bless her right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. I'm just hearing God that, that I'm going to bless you, Father God. And not just with things, I'm just going to bless you with my presence. I'm just going to just bless you with a spirit of rest, resting mm -hmm. in my presence. And so that I may minister and speak to you. And God says that as you just uh, quiet yourself and quiet your spirit, God says that I'm going to begin to speak to you about some things and some concerns that you have. Because God says there are many things and many concerns that you have. And God says I'm going to minister to those things. And God says that as you quiet your spirit, as you just seek me with all your heart, God says I'm just going to answer some of those questions that you've been yearning for. And God says that that in that, God says, I'm going to give you that peace that you've been asking me for. I'm just going to give you that, 
that, that rest that you've been yearning for. And God says with you, I'm well pleased. And God says that, that the love that, that, that's been poured out through my spirit is going to overflow you and it's going to overwhelm you. And God says, just look forward to that. And God says that I have a plan for your life. I have a plan. I have a purpose for your life. And God says that there's some things that you've been asking for. And God says that I have not changed what I have purposed for you. I have not changed what I have created you for. So God says, just, just continue to seek me. And, and God says that those things will be manifested. Those things will be revealed as you seek me. And God says that you are in the right place at the right time. And God says, I'm pleased with you. And God says, because you are a prayer warrior. And God says, even in the midst of things, even in the midst of some tests, even through the midst of some trials, you still stayed in there. You didn't cave, cave in. You didn't quit. And God says, because of that, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to honor you. Because my word says that those who honor me, I will honor them. Amen. So God says, well done. And God says, just keep on what you're doing and keep on uh, seeking me. And God says, you're going to see the result of that. And God says, with you, daughter, I'm well pleased. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Jamie, I just even heard, um, just even confirmed what um, Pastor Sean has said, that this is a season to even quiet your spirit. This is a season, the Lord said, to begin to even commune with me. And the Lord said, this even is, an, I, I feel like this is a, a special anointed time that God would like to set aside and the Lord said to even give you even greater direction, greater strategy, greater insight. And the Lord said, but there's even a greater healing and just even a greater rest, even over your spirit, over all things, the Lord says. And the Lord says, and I, there's a there's a place, the Lord said, where I'm just even, that I'm meeting you at, daughter, where there's just even greater communion. There's just even a greater intimacy. There's a greater relationship that's even developing. And the Lord said, and I'm even beginning to even, I just see an exchange, the Lord said, where I'm even pouring into your spirit, even at that time. And the Lord said, I'm pouring in revelation. I'm pouring in a knowledge. I'm pouring in. The Lord said, my healing anointing. And the Lord said, so as you feel the unction of me pulling you aside to even set aside that time, or you pulling you aside, the Lord said, to even come commune with me. This is a season to be even sensitive to my spirit because there's even much in which I am even depositing in you. And the Lord said, and even for the things to come. And the Lord said, and you've been seeking. And the Lord said, so this daughter, I'm letting you know, this is a special time. The Lord says, and even there's just a great anointing even over that. And I just feel that unction. So Father, we release our Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, even that time, Lord God, that divine time, Lord God, for that connection and intimacy, Lord God, where, Lord, you're going to pour into her. I thank you, Lord God, for even the rest that's coming, Lord God, to her spirit, rest to her body right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now, Father, for even all that you're doing. Lord God, even the purpose, even of that time for even things to come, Lord God. And so we just anoint it, Lord God. We just pray protection over it right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now, Father, Lord God, Lord, that for all that you're going to do in the midst of that season and in the midst of that time with her. And we seal this word in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so we have um, Jacqueline and Nathan. Amen. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for Jacqueline and Nathan. I thank you for this powerful, anointed marriage that you have put together, Father God. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God, for you are raising them up in this season to demonstrate your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, for all the training that you have put in their spirit, Father God, prophetically, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that they are ministers of the new covenant. I thank you, Father God, that they are influencing their region and they are influencing everywhere that they go father god through your kingdom and through and through the knowledge and the anointing that you have put in the spirit and we're hearing god says that he will continue to increase that anointing and that prophetic flow there that is in the both of y'all and he's 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 beginning now to refine it all the gifts of the spirits that the, all the gifts of the spirit that is within you so god says that continue to seek me and god says that even even when the enemy um has tried to come and, and do some things to try to interrupt the purpose I have for my life. I have rebuked him. And God says, because I have put the, this marriage together, and God says that that um, there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. Amen. So God says, just continue to move forward in my presence, move forward in my anointing, move forward in the gifts that I have uh, blessed you with. 
and God says that you are in the right place at the right time. God says, hang in there. And God says, just continue to seek me. God says, continue to put me first. God says, continue to make me the, the, the center of everything that you do and everything that you decide to do. And God says, it, it, as you do that, God says, you will see that uh, all things is working together for your good. And God says that you will see my presence. And, and God says that, that um, some decisions that may seem um, difficult, that God says, as you seek me, as you seek my direction, as you seek uh, my voice, God says that I'm going to bring clarity to some things that, um, some decisions that need to be made. So God says that he loves you, and God says that you are doing great, and God says that you are at the right place at the right time. And we seal that word in Jesus' name to my brother and my sister right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I just hear the word opportunity and open doors. So, Father, we just declare the open doors, Lord God, to come in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for opportunities, Lord God, and open doors. I thank you for right positioning, Lord God, so they can walk through those doors, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father. I thank you right now, Father, for even releasing strategies in this season, Lord God. I thank you right now, Father, for even releasing them to be on one accord in this season, Lord God, even as these opportunities come about, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now, Father, even for the suddenlies. We just declare the suddenlies to come, Lord God, in Jesus' name. I just thank you right now, Father, amen, for that, for your word, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you're doing a new thing, Lord God, and shall they not know it. I thank you, Lord, that it will spring forth, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I thank you right now, Father, amen, Lord God, that we just even declare, Lord, what door you open, no man can shut, amen, amen. and that they, Lord God, will be even ready and at the door. I remember Apostle Leon I think it was Apostle Leon spoke about being at the door. Amen. And sometimes the difficulty is being getting to the door. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, so, Lord, we just bind up any hindrance. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we come against any form of distraction. Lord God, in Jesus' name, or any obstacles, Lord God, that the enemy will try to put in the way of them getting to that open door. And I thank you right now for the boldness and the trust. Lord God, in the faith to walk through the open door, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And we declare it as such. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. And this is for Jonay Helam. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Jonay. We thank you, Lord, in the name of John Jesus. Name. Oh, Jonay. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in her life in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for her purpose. We thank you, Lord, for her commitment. I'm mean, hearing that, that, that you are one who is committed to me. And God says that, that you have a commitment level that I have put inside of you that it will continue to increase. And God says you are a giver. And God says you are one that, that, that loves to uh, give and, and loves to bless others. And God says that as you do that, I'm going to minister to your needs and meet your needs. And God says that, that, that you are one that that I have put uh, uh, some gifts and talents in. And God says that there, there is ministry in you. And God says that there, there, there is uh, prophetic ministry in you. And God says, just continue to seek me for the gifts. And God says, seek me for the training. That God says that there, that there is going to be opportunities for training when it comes to the gifts, when it comes to the prophetic ministry. So God says, take, take the time and um, use this time and opportunity to to get that training and get that knowledge so that so that I can bless you with it and so that you can bless others. And God says you are doing a great job. And God says that, that even some personal things God says that he's going to bless you with. God says that uh, as you delight yourself in me, I'm going to give you the desires of my heart that I'm going to put in you. I'm going to put those desires in your heart. And so God says, well done. And God says that, that, that you have a servant's heart. And God says that, that, that you are you are someone who puts others ahead of yourself. And God says with that, I am well pleased and continue to do that. And we, we seal those words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we just lift your day up right now in Jesus' name, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, even for what you're doing in this season, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that we're just praying strength over her, Lord, strength in her body, strength in her mind. 
Lord, we just declare strength, Lord God, supernatural, Lord God, all, all around her, Father. In Jesus' name, Father. And I just thank you, Shama, that the son led it to say, Lord, that, amen. I just hear the Lord say, this is a season I'm even strengthening you. There's just even a double portion that's even coming your way, daughter. And the Lord said, I'm bringing even great strength, Lord God, even to your mind. And I just hear the um, fortified. <clears throat> There's a fortitude. There's just a strength that God is bringing. And the Lord said, and, and the Lord said, and I'm causing you to even stand even stronger in the season. And the Lord said, and I'm causing you to, regardless of even what adversities may come, daughter, you're going to stand in this season. And the Lord said, and I'm fortifying you in this season. And I just thank you right now, Father, for even protection. I thank you for strength. I thank you for angels on assignment, Lord God, to cover her even in this season. Lord, I thank you right now. You're fortifying even her mind, Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name. And we just come against anything that the enemy will try to do to bring, Lord God, any kind of even oppression, Lord God, even over her mind, over her thoughts, Lord God, any negativity, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. That she will be, amen. And I just even hear the Lord say, even part of the, the weapon of warfare, or even what God is calling you to do, even in this season, and the Lord said is meditate and begin to meditate in my word. And the Lord said, and meditate on those things that are above, Lord God mm -hmm. says, and meditate on those things which are pure. And the Lord said, and are peaceful. Yeah. And the Lord said, those are the things that I'm calling you to meditate. And so even when the, uh, the thoughts come or when the, uh, you know, the feeling of overwhelmness or just sometimes just the, you know, the weariness, the Lord says, begin to meditate on those things and allow me even in the season to be able, I feel like the Lord said, even um, be that weapon of warfare, even as you meditate on me, the Lord said, know that I will begin to even cast down, the Lord said, even all those things that the enemy is trying to even bring against you. And it's just like, I feel like the enemy is just has an onslaught. It's just trying to bring a lot of oppression and pressure. And the Lord said, and begin just to meditate and allow me, the Lord said, to take all of that on. And the Lord said, and just be in a place of even peace with me. There is a peace in, uh, that I'm bringing you to as you meditate on me. It's almost, a, like I said, it's a weapon of war for the Lord just will enclose you with his cloak of peace. There's a protection that God is bringing you to so that whenever that feeling comes, you just begin to meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the goodness of God. Meditate on those things. And the Lord said, and you will feel even my peace overtake you. Mm -hmm. So Father, we release that strategy to her even in the season. I thank you right now that no weapons formed against her will prosper. In Jesus' name, as your word says so, Father, I thank you, Lord, for even angels on assignment, Lord God, that you have, Lord God, to keep her, Lord God, and guard her, even as your word said, lest she dash her foot, Father. And so, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord God, for mm -hmm. that peace, Lord God, that you have are surrounding her with, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, that she will be quick to be in that place of meditating even on you lord god and we just release that to her right now and seal that word in jesus name we pray amen amen and then we have um lashonda sumbler amen LaShonda. father we thank you lord for lashonda we thank you father god for for her perseverance father god we thank you for for her strength we thank you for her might we thank you father god for everything, <coughs> for everything that she is going through we thank you father god that that, that she is one who seeks you in everything that she does, Father God. And even though the enemy has tried to put things that will try to cause her to quit, I thank you, Father God, that she has stood. And I thank you, Father God, that your word says that, that when, when things come against you, the Bible says to stand. Amen. And to stand therefore, stand therefore with in the presence of God and to stand even in the midst of everything that you're going through. And you are one who knows how to stand even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of adversity. And God says that he is pleased with that. And God says that that he's bringing a, a, a new um, new strategy for, for the things that you're going through. And he's bringing a wisdom. He's saying, seek me for wisdom in, in some of the hard decisions that you need to make in this season. And God says, as you seek me, God says, I'm gonna give you that wisdom that, 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 that you will need in order to uh, make these hard decisions. And God says, I understand that, that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And understand that, that I am the one 
who, who knows all, and I am the one who's been there, even in the midst of, of difficult mm -hmm. circumstances, even in the midst of difficult things that you've gone through. God says, doesn't my word says, I will be with you in trouble, but I will deliver you with honor. So God says that, that uh, be not weary in well-doing, for in due seasons you're going to reap if you faint not. So God says in this season that you're going to reap it if, only if you don't faint. So God says don't faint in this season. God says you're going to reap the harvest. And God says you're going to reap everything that, 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 that's been uh, due to you as long as you don't faint. So I just seal that word to my sister now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, I just thank you for LaShonda. And I lift her up right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. That, amen. I We just break off even a weariness, Lord God, in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. There's even, Lord God, just amen. I thank you right now, Father, Lord God, that in the season, Lord God, you will be a comforter, Lord God. You will bring strength, Lord God. You will restore joy, Lord God, in Jesus' name. I thank you right now, Father. I just even hear the Lord say this is a season, daughter, that even... The Lord said, you have endured much. And the Lord said, and even much over the years. But the Lord said, this is a season, daughter, where even, the Lord said, where it looks like there's just been a lot that has been happening. But daughter, there has even been a lot, even in the spiritual. And the Lord said, there's even been a lot of strengthening, even in your spirit. The Lord said, there's even boldness that I have even put in you. I just even hear the Lord say, he's proud of you for even stepping out of your boat, even in the season. And the Lord said, and because of your faithfulness, even greater anointing and greater revelation is coming and even as you have been seeking me the lord said for direction and seeking me even for ministry the lord said i'm gonna begin to even give you uh, uh, even a revelation of even all the things to come the lord said even a revelation of even the purpose and the plans that i have for you so the lord said even in this season do not allow yourself to get overwhelmed do not allow yourself amen to feel rushed i hear the lord said that you're in the perfect place you're in the right time you have not missed anything and the lord said and even as the uh, Shamaratha Sahihan that say, Lord God says, even the Lord said, even though with the finances, the Lord said, I'm even, uh, I, I am the one, amen, who supplies all of your needs. So this is not a season to even allow yourself to be um, pushed and rushed even by that, fi or the finances. But the Lord said, just allow yourself to trust me in this process. Trust me in this season and trust even what I'm doing for you, even if what I'm doing for your son. And the Lord said, know that I'm bringing you to a great place where your ladder is so much greater than before. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said that there's even a greater anointing I'm even putting in you. And the Lord said, and even in and, uh, even in your words, the Lord said, even in what you pray, the Lord said, you've seen the anointing. And the Lord said, so allow me to even do the work that I'm doing with you, even in this season. And so, Father, I thank you right now, Lord for the great work that you're doing even in her and through her. Lord, I just thank you right now, Father, that Lord, we just release the joy of the Lord, which is her strength in this season, Father God. And Lord, I thank you right now, Father, for even bringing her to that place of understanding, Lord God, direction, strategy, and revelation, Father, in this season as she just says steadfast, Lord God, even with you. So Father, we thank you right now, Lord God. Even, amen, I hear him again, just for you being pleased, Lord God, of her stepping out of her boat. I thank you, Lord, that she She's growing. She's stretching. And the Lord said, just even now, there's a growth. There's been such a growth even in you. Daughter, with I, with you, I am well pleased. So, Father, we seal these words right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I forgot. And, oh, Jamie. Jamie. Father, I thank you, God, for Jamie. <coughs> I thank you, Lord, for um, what you're doing. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, just to bless her and just strengthen her. Just give her a resolve to continue to move forward in you and move forward in your anointing and move forward in your purpose, Father God, that you have for her. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father God, that she is a, 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 a woman, Father God, that, that, that is seeking you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that, 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 that she is one who knows how to seek you and who knows how to read and apply your <coughs> and i just thank you father god for her and i just ask father god as you continue to protect her continue to watch over her father god continue to pour out your love to her in the name of jesus father god and i just thank you for her and i think god says that, that that you have you are somebody who who is becoming a willing vessel to do what i've called you to do and god says that that he he he, he loves you for that and god says that he will continue to to use you as your vessel 
to bless others. And God says, and God says, you, you are one who, who, who knows how to bless others. And God says, because you bless others, God says, I want to bless you and your household. Yeah. And God says that you, that even the prayers that you've been praying about, about some, the salvation of, of some people in your household, God says that he will honor that because you are one who honors others. And God says, you are one who bless others. So God says, just continue to be doing what you're doing. God says that you are in the right place at the right time. God says that just just, just continue to just use your faith. God, God says that you are one who, who uses your faith um, the way I have called you to do and the way my word has, uh, taught, has taught you. And God says that you are a woman of great faith. You are a woman who believes those things that be not as though as though they were. So God says just continue to do that. And God says that know that I am pleased with you. And God says with you I am well pleased. And we seal those words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we just thank you for Jamie right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for this woman of strength, Lord God. This woman, Lord God, of valor, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God. Amen. This woman... Lord God, a resource. Amen. I just hear the Lord said you are just even resourceful. And I just thank you right now, Father. Amen. For her just creativity. And the Lord said, daughter, amen. With you, I am well pleased. And the Lord said, and even in this season, the Lord said, even there's been many pulls, even on your giftings. And the Lord said, and I've given you many giftings and you've had to shift and move and do. And the Lord said, even for the family, and the Lord said, you've been one who's ex been very resourceful. And the Lord said, and daughter, so even with you, I'm well pleased. And the Lord said, amen, that there's just even been a place, the Lord said, where you've just had to, amen, feel like you've juggled it all. And the Lord said, but there's even a greater help coming even in the season. And the Lord said, an even greater revelation coming in the season. And the Lord said, amen, I just even feel like, amen, and I think this is Jamie and uh, <clears throat> Diego. And, and yeah, please confirm if it is. Amen. Amen. But I, I just even feel there's even a greater unity even coming and where there even has been even because of the pandemic and everything else, there's just even a stress. The Lord said that you amen, he's just been proud because you've worked through it. And the Lord said there's even greater unity, there's greater resources. There's just even just the Lord said, even a greater resolve that's even within you, daughter. And the Lord said, there's even a strength, the Lord said, that just goes deep. And the Lord said, so I'm even well pleased with you. And the Lord said, and there's even just been a desire. And the Lord said, of even a uh, Shamarata Sahih, I'm to say, even of entrepreneurship, even of things, the Lord said, even of a business. And it's, I, I just sense it's a family business. And so, Lord, I just release, Lord God that anointing for the family business right now in Jesus name. I thank you Lord God for the tight knitness of the family and the unit right now in Jesus name. And I thank you for even strategy and resources. I thank you Lord God for bringing, giving her Lord God even witty ideas Amen. Lord God in this season. And I thank you Lord God that you're going to have her write it down. I thank you Lord that you're going to bring even birthing. I believe it's even beyond the writing portion. I'm not sure where you are in it but I just thank you right now Father in Jesus name Lord God that you're going to do great and miraculous things in them and through them, Lord God, because of their faithfulness and because of her steadfastness, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. And I thank you right now, Father, Lord, that she is one that you can trust, Lord, because she trusts you. And so, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, that we lose that anointing, Lord God, for that business, for entrepreneurship. Lord, we lose that anointing for, Lord God, growth, Lord God, and that resourcefulness. We lose that anointing, Lord God, for just greater strategy, even in this season. And Lord, all that you're doing in them and through them right now, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just declare protection around their whole household, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. And we just thank you right now, Lord, for all that you're going to do, Lord God, in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so we have some um, <coughs> prayer requests. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it is Jamie and Diego. Oh, Amen. awesome. Amen. Bless you all. Oh, say hello to the girls. Amen. Amen. Um, so we have prayer for Diana Sharp. So you, we just want to, we'll record this. Cause oh, is it specific prayer? No, just this prayer. So let's just pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for Diana. We thank you, Lord, for God. <laughs> We thank you, Lord, for, for this woman, Father God, who is seeking you, Father God. So, Father, just strengthen her, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that she is a woman of the Most High God. And we thank you, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus over her and her family. In Jesus' name, Father God. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that she is seeking you with all her heart. 
we thank you, Father God, in the, in Jesus' name, Father God. And I and, and I just bind right, right now any in any form of depression or any form of oppression or anything that the enemy would try to put on, on her mind, Father God, to just cause her to just uh, to just doubt herself and doubt herself in God. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that she is in you. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, Father God, that, that, that she is a woman who you have um, who, who you have ordained for this time, and, 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 and she has an Esther anointing, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that, that, that she is somebody who, who, who longs to, to get before the King, who longs to get into the presence of God. And we just thank you, Lord, for her, Father God. And we just ask, we just ask you, Father God, that you just strengthen her spirit, Father God, tonight. In Jesus' name, Father God, and just strengthen her family. And we just ask that you just give her the desires of, of her heart as she delights herself in you. And we just thank you, Father God, of, of what she's doing. We just ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that, that we just that you just surround her with your angels of protection. We just I ask you that you just surround her with your presence and your love. And we just thank you for her, Father God, that she has the strength to go on and she will finish all the way to the end. And, and everything is not finished. I'm hearing God says that all that, that, that I have for you is not done. And God says there are many things I have for you to do. And God says just don't give up and just continue to seek me. And I have a purpose and plan for your life. And I just thank you for her. And we seal those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we just even break off any form of loneliness right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just lose the strength and an encouragement for her even in this season. Lord God, in Jesus' name, a hope of new things to come. Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you right now, Father. Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father, amen. Just even to pour the love of God even upon her, Lord God, in Jesus' name, even in the season. Lord God, I thank you, Father. That, amen. She will know you even as her Abba Father in the season, Lord God. I thank you for strengthening her, Lord God, even her spiritually, Lord God, in Jesus' name. But strengthening her, Lord God, in her, even in her emotions and her mind, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Just Father God, I thank you, Father, for just angels on assignment to cover and protect her in the season, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And we just break off, Lord God, that feeling of loneliness, mm -hmm. Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just declare that you bring godly people. Lord God, in Jesus' name, and godly friends, Lord God, I know it's the pandemic, but just the phone calls, Lord God, amen, mm -hmm. and all of those great things, Lord God. So we just thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name for her, and we just strengthen her in this season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so we're praying for Jam's brother Michael receiving healing and salvation. Okay, so Father God, in Jesus' name, we just lift up Michael right now in Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, amen. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. So we, Lord God, stand, Lord God, in Jesus' name with Jan. As we declare, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father, that he will receive healing and salvation, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you'll begin, Father God, touching his heart, touch his mind. Bring him, bring him to a place, Lord God, to be ready to open and receive, Lord God, your salvation, Lord God, your miraculous power, Lord God, in Jesus' name, your gift to us. Lord God, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for even bringing healing, Lord God, to his body, healing to his mind, Lord God, healing to his emotions, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, Father, that you will send that one, Lord God, in Jesus' name, to plant the other to water, but Father, you would get Amen. the increase. Amen? Amen. And so, Father, I thank you for the divine connections. I thank you, Lord. For even what Jam is even ministering to her brother, Lord God, those seeds are following on fertile ground, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And they will take root and they will produce good fruit. And we declare it over him right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up Tina McLeod right now in Jesus' name, Father. I thank you, Lord, that she's seeking you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, with her whole heart. I thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you will begin to, Lord God, Give her revelation and understanding, Lord God, even direction, Lord God, for what you called her to do. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that in this season, Lord God, her heart is right towards you. Lord God, that she's seeking you, Lord God, in Jesus' name for the next steps. Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now, Father, that you will begin to order them for her, Father God. And even as you do, Lord, you will begin to illuminate, Lord God, all that you would have her to do, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you right now, Lord God, for bringing revelation, Lord God, 
not only through your word, Father God, that your logos word, Lord God, but I thank you right now through prophetic words. I thank you, Lord, that she hears you. I thank you, Lord God, that even as you speak to her, she'll begin to get downloads, Lord God, of revelation and understanding, Lord God. I thank you right now, Father Lord, that she will be led by the spirit, not by her mind, not by what she sees, but by the spirit, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father, because Lord, you have a plan and a purpose for her, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. And I thank you right now, Father, amen, that your peace will guide her. Your peace will lead her into that place, Lord God, even as she's seeking you. So, Father, I thank you right now, Lord, that we bind up every logic of man and we release, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, the anointing of God, Lord God, in Jesus' name, as you begin to impart, Lord God, direction and strategy amen. for her in this season. Amen. And Lord, we lift up right now in Jesus' name, Brittany, and Lord God, in Jesus' the same. And I thank you right now, Father, Lord God, that your healing anointing, Lord God, will go and we send forth that healing, Lord yes. God. You send in your word and you send the word and the, and, the, and the word will heal them. And so, Father, we send that word of healing to her, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And we declare and decree, Father, that she has not, Lord God, her body, Lord God, will be totally healed, Lord God, and rid of anything, Lord God, that has been, as she has been exposed to mold and any toxicity. We thank you right now, Father, that it cannot dwell in her, Father, because you dwell in her. I thank you for the blood that flows through her veins, Lord God, that is your blood, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that's cleansing and purifying in Jesus' name, Lord God. I thank you. It will rid out, Lord God, any abnormalities. It will rid out any toxicity. It will rid out all molds and any foreign things that should not be in there. Lord, we declare complete and total healing over her right now in Jesus' name. I expect the good report from the Lord. Lord, I thank you right now. It will not affect her re her uh, respiratory system. It will not affect any systems in her body in Jesus' name, Lord God. But she will walk in that place of divine health. So, Lord, we speak right now in Jesus' name and we declare the healing anointing to touch her this very moment, this very instance right now in Jesus' name and cover her with the blood of Jesus, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you right now that you touch her whole family right now in Jesus' name and strengthen them in this season. Lord, we loose your anointing upon them right now in Jesus' name, Father. And I thank you right now, Father. Amen. Lord God, it's just for greater wisdom and strength in this season. In Jesus' name, Lord God, I thank you, Lord. Lord, that even as they continue to seek you, Lord God, you will be, Lord God, Lord, deliver Deliver them, Father God, and deliver her, Lord God, from even all these uh, troubles, Lord God. And Lord, we just bind up even every spirit of affirmity that will try to come against her and attack her in this season, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you right now, Father, that we just declare that all is well. That all is well in Jesus' name, Father. And Lord, we lift up Carol Kelly right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just bind up every spirit of oppression, Lord God, and depression, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God. We come against every mind-binding spirit, Lord God, would try to, Father God, keep her in a place, Lord God, in Jesus' name, of even oppression and weariness right now in Jesus' name. We just cancel every assignment sent from the pit of hell, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we break off every form of darkness, Lord God, and we cancel every negative thought, Lord God, that's being sent, Lord God, to her mind in Jesus' name, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that your voice is louder than any other voice she hears, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And your voice brings life and your voice brings peace and your voice brings joy in Jesus' name, Lord God. So we right now declare that over her. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we declare the peace to overtake her. We declare life over her, and we declare joy within her, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Father. And I thank you right now, Lord, that you'll begin to stir up the joy of the Lord, which is her strength in this season, Father. I thank you for giving her strategy. I thank you, Lord God, that she will guard what she watched and guard what she looks at and what she listens to. And Lord God, she will only do those things that bring a, a edification to you and joy to you and a joy to herself right now in Jesus' name, Lord. And Father, we come against any kind of, Lord God, uh, Lord, you will touch and anoint her head right now in Jesus' name, that you will normalize every level in her, Lord God, her brain, her body, her system, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord, the entire nervous system, Lord, normalize 
every levels of in her, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And bring her to a place of peace, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I thank you right now for Victoria Miller, Lord. And we lift her up, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we declare breakthrough for her. Lord, breakthrough in every area. We declare breakthrough in her finances, breakthrough in housing. Lord, breakthrough in food, breakthrough in all of the things that she needs. Lord, I thank you right now, Father, in Jesus' name, that your word says that you've never seen the righteous forsaken or your seed begging bread. So Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, that as she seeks you, even as Amen. Pastor Sean says she seeks you, Lord, that you will begin to add all of those things to you. Lord God, that you will, God, begin to bless her, Father God, and bring, Lord God, in Jesus' name, and be <clears throat> and provide for all of her needs, Lord God, in this season. So, Father, we thank you for the miraculous, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you're going to do. Lord, I thank you for increasing her faith to believe, to receive, Father, even greater than what she's ever thought, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. And, Father, we thank you right now for Jack in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we thank you, Father, amen, that Jack is in need of two pair of glasses. Amen, Jack. Amen. So, Father, we thank you right now, Lord, amen, Lord, you know, Lord, amen. You have not because you ask not. So, Father, give Jack a good deal on these two-player glasses that are on sale and let it be better than what he ever thought, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you right now, Father, for the right uh, customer service, the right person in the store, the right uh, optometrist who's going to do look at his eyes. Father, I thank you right now, Father, Lord, that you've already given him a sweet deal on this. And Lord God, you're sending him to the right location. And the Lord God, in Jesus' name, and it's already set up for him, Lord God, as he comes through. So Lord, I thank you for favor upon Jack as he gets his new glasses. Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. And Father, we just pray for and lift up Dr. Phoebe right now in Jesus' name. And we come against every form of oppression and depression, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We thank you right now, Father, Lord. I just break. There's just even a dark cloud. I just even hear darkness. There's just darkness that's trying to consume and overtake people. So <clears throat> if any of you are out there <clears throat> that's feeling a heaviness or an oppression, that's a darkness. And that's a spiritual assault. That's an attack. And you, you got to come against that. So we just right now, we come against this darkness and this spiritual assault and attack on the people to bring a weariness, Lord God, to bring oppression and depression right now in Jesus' name. And we cancel this assignment right now in Jesus' name, Lord. You've given us the keys to the kingdom. So whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever we bound on earth will be bound in heaven. So we bind up every form of darkness and oppression that will try to come against the people of Christ and come against your mind. Amen. It's attacking you in the mind. And I just break its power right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you right now, Lord, that you're fortifying our mind, Lord God, with your spirit. Because as we meditate on those things, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, we strengthen our mind to go so we don't get attacked by this oppression. Father, in Jesus' name, that is our weapon of warfare. So, Father, we thank you right now, Lord, that this season of meditation, to be able to spend time with you, to meditate on the goodness of the Lord, will strengthen us in this season, to meditate on those things that God has already brought you through, will strengthen you in this season, to meditate on the word where you say, oh my goodness, if he did it for them, he will do it for me because God is no respecter of person will get you through in this season where you can listen to others and be grateful and joyful and excited about their blessings because if they're blessed, he will bless you because amen, God's no respecter of a person. And I used to always say, well, if he blessing someone in CLC, he in the neighborhood, everybody going to get blessed eventually. So be excited about those things and begin to war against the oppression and the darkness by stirring yourself up and getting excited about what's to come because if the oppression is coming breakthrough is right behind it amen so father we loose Lord god that is stirring up that anointing of joy in the inside we loose Lord god the stirring up lord god in jesus name our weapons of warfare to praise and to meditate and to worship and to come against Lord god in jesus name and fortify our mind 
Lord God, because the word says, amen, in Jesus' name, Father, to take every thought captive, amen, that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into uh, um, captivity or submission, amen? You make it into submission. So that thing has to listen to you, amen? And so you say, I will refuse to think that way. I refuse to feel this way. I refuse to allow you to worry me. I refuse because if you resist the devil, it will flee. Amen. And so you bring that thing into captivity. Amen. In submission unto Christ Jesus. And Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, that you have given us power and authority over our thought lives in Jesus' name, that we could take authority over our thoughts in Jesus' name and bring them into submission. Amen. So Father, we release that anointing right now in Jesus' name and we release the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Meditate on the joy of of the Lord. Amen. And Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sorry. I got excited on amen. that. Yeah, amen. Amen. When she's in, the, in that, that anointing hit her, just let her go. Amen. She is a prophetic anointed woman of God and she preaches the word, but she's also a powerful prayer warrior. Amen. And one thing that our apostles always teaches us is that you know, in order to flow in the prophetic, you have to be able to pray. You have to be able to intercede. And so you, you can't be a prophetic person without uh, personal prayer. Amen. So amen. thank God for that. So amen. Amen. So. amen. All right. That's it. So we got the that's all. Thank you, Armani. So we're just um, going to go over announcements really quick. So again, please join us, um, ladies and gentlemen. You know, men can join women's group, <laughs> but we're going to, you know, amen. But please join us on tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, the Zoom link was sent out again, so hopefully you got that. Um, and we'll be talking about um, when, um, oh, the hand of God, or I forgot, amen. But it's Judges chapters 4 and 5, amen? Mm -hmm. And so all of that has been emailed to you. Also, remember on April 4th, which is Easter Resurrection Day, we'll be next taking, Sunday. next Sunday, we'll be taking communion. So have your communion a material ready so that you can you know join us in taking communion on that particular day um, we also have the newsletter that will be coming out next week as well and we have Apostle Leon that's on the 9th of April which is Friday night and the 11th which is our Sunday service and he'll be guest minister for both services. Right. Now, this right? Friday is Good Friday. We don't have good service. Yes. Yeah, so, amen. Thank we don't you, have Sean. service. I'm sorry. So, the, for the week, we have our Monday night discipleship mm -hmm. class on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we'll have prayer tabernacle. But this Friday, which I believe is good April Friday. 2nd, mm -hmm. is Good Friday. We do not have our Friday night table talk. So, that night, we don't have service. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, just make sure you mark your calendar. And then, as always, we thank you all for your faithfulness. And your support um, through your giving. Um, if you can need to tithe or, or donate or to wish to do so, um, then please visit our website. We have the donate button on the website, www.covenant-life-church.org. Um, amen. This, we are still, although we're not even in our <laughs> in the sanctuary, amen, because we have the building, we still have bills to pay, amen. amen. And um I believe Apostle Linda just kind of announced that we're putting a new door on mm -hmm. per the fire department. And so that's about another $4,500 expense. So, yeah, amen. You know, we, we talk, share with you everything that's going on. But understand, we know that, amen, my philosophy and my belief, if it's God's will, it's God's bill. So if God said, I'm giving you the church, then amen, he's going to give you the church amen. and provide you with everything you need to be able to function in it so the provisions will be but we thank you because those provisions have been coming through the people and so we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you for the time that you've taken to donate and we just encourage you to continue to do so amen amen all right well that's all the announcements so real quick if you are not saved <coughs> um, just me. repeat quickly after me and say father god i repent of all my sins amen Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior and God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you have raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth that you, Jesus, is my Lord. And I believe with all my heart that you, God, have raised him from the dead. And because of that confession Amen. and because of, of, of that, I am saved. So I thank you, Lord, for saving me. 
come into my heart and continue to be in the center of my heart. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. okay. So, you want to close, close prayer? <laughs> Father, I thank you, God, Amen. for this night, Father God. I thank you for the word. I thank you, God, for the, the prophetic prayers. I thank you, Lord, for the healing for everybody who needs healing, Father God. Yes. Father, I just yes. thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, for our, for our apostles and our pastors, Father God. And I thank you for everybody uh, who's a member of CLC and everybody who's connected with CLC yes, through, uh, through, through Covenant Partnership and even people who are just uh, faithful visitors on Facebook. And we just thank you for each and every one of them, Father God, and just continue to protect them, Father God. Prosper them in every area of their life, Father God. And Father God, we decree the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich and has no sorrow to Amen. it. So we decree the blessing on each and every person. Yes, and we Lord. decree Psalm 91 over each and every person. Yes, Father God, Lord. no evil shall befall them, neither shall any plague, sickness, or disease, or COVID-19 come down their dwelling. And we thank you, Father God, that no weapon is formed against them shall prosper. Yes, and Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, and Father God, in the name and by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all in Jesus' name. God bless you, Facebook. Until we see you again, Amen. God bless you. Amen. Good night. Okay, good night.